I pay over $2,800 a year for 18 credit cards. Sounds crazy, right? But what if I told you only seven of them have annual fees and they actually save me more money than I spend? Today, I'll show you the credits, benefits, and perks that make these cards worth the investment. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to turn those dreaded annual fees into incredible value, unlock perks you didn't know existed, and maximize every dollar spent. First, I'm gonna start off with the credit card that I think is the easiest to justify its annual fees every year. The Capital One Venture X has a $395 annual fee, but what if I told you there's a way to almost instantly slash that down by $300 every year that you hold onto it? This card comes with an annual $300 travel credit that's surprisingly easy to use, but is that enough to justify such a high fee? Let me show you how I made the most of it on a recent trip to Lafayette, Louisiana. I paid $411 for the entire flight from Los Angeles to Louisiana and used the credit to cover $300 of it, which means I only earned 5x points on the remaining $111 that the travel credit did not cover. Of course, this travel credit is only gonna be triggered on purchases made through the Capital One travel portal, but prices were pretty much the same as booking directly, so I didn't miss out. No, it's not perfect, but the travel credit is simple to use. Just book your flights, hotel, or rental car through the Capital One Travel Portal, and that's it. But let me tell you why booking through Capital One Travel Portal isn't as bad as it might seem. The Capital One Portal has an automatic price drop protection feature that monitors your flights for 10 days after booking. And if the price does drop, you get a credit for the difference, up to $50. Unfortunately, my flight price went up instead, but at least I was covered in the case that it did go down. There's also a price match guarantee where Capital One will refund the difference if you find a cheaper price within 24 hours of booking your flight through their Capital One travel portal. You could file a claim with Capital One and receive 100% of the price difference as a travel credit if your claim is eligible. As long as the cheaper itinerary or the cheaper flights matches your original booking through the Capital One travel portal exactly, it has to be priced in US dollars, available to the public, and still bookable when you contact them. So far, that travel credit just covers $300 of the $395 annual fee, so what else can you do? Another way to recoup that annual fee is to visit the Capital One lounges. I haven't made it to a Capital One lounge yet, but I've heard that they are spacious, rarely crowded and have great amenities like food, drinks, showers, etc. Before covering the second benefit that will easily cover the rest of the annual fee, I wanna to touch upon two points that I love about the Venture X. I love having a credit card that earns 2X on general purchases, that is also a Visa, and has no foreign transaction fees. I went to Uruguay this summer and tell you what, this card came in clutch every single day that I was there for. But one more feature more people should take advantage of is the free authorized user benefit. I added my girlfriend and now she enjoys Capital One, Priority Pass, or Plaza Premium Lounge Access without me even being there. No other premium travel credit card offers this for free. It's a game changer for families, or friends who travel a lot together. If those perks, however, don't help cover the remaining $95 left on the annual fee, there's this one last thing that will cover it. Every anniversary year, you'll receive 10,000 Capital One miles that are worth $100 when you use them in the Capital One travel portal. These miles are the same as those you earn from spend on the card and from sign-up bonuses, which means you could also use it for transferring to a Capital One travel partner or even cash back. These anniversary miles are added to your normal miles balance and will not expire. You could stack this benefit year after year. Personally, I'll likely transfer those miles to get the most value for me, but the travel portal is always a solid backup. I got my Capital One Venture X card in April of 2024, so I have not yet received my anniversary miles. However, I did hit the sign up bonus, so that does help recoup the value for the first year that I own this card. Now let's talk about the card that's been the toughest to justify every year the Chase Sapphire Preferred. It's time to break down why me and this card are in a love-hate relationship. I love Chase, don't get me wrong. Chase is the best, but enough about me. Chase the Bank is my favorite credit card issuer. Their points are the most valuable for me and I think they have decent credit cards amongst their entire portfolio. The bad news is that Chase knows that they are good, which means they don't try to improve their credit cards. However, 
let's not go down that rabbit hole in this video. Instead, let's focus on how I justify the Chase Sapphire Preferred's $95 annual fee every year. The Chase Sapphire Preferred offers up to $50 in statement credits each year for hotel bookings booked through the Chase Travel Portal. Honestly, I hardly ever use it. I tend to book hotels directly and use other credit cards for that, which I'll actually be talking about some of them later in this video. They also have some limited time perks like earning 5x points on PUD purchases over $150 and on lift rides through March 2025. Plus you get a one year complimentary Dash Pass membership and $10 a monthly credit on non restaurant orders through DoorDash. And if you spend a lot on your Sapphire Preferred, you'll get bonus points equal to 10% of your annual purchases. So $10,000 spent in one year gets you 1000 bonus chase points. Those are quite a few perks. But here's the thing. I don't use any of those. Instead, I get my annual fee back in two other ways. But before I get into that, I should mention that I have six other Chase credit cards, all with no annual fees. They all earn me Chase Ultimate Reward Points, but the points alone on those cards aren't worth as much without the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Here's why. I could transfer points from those cards the no annual fee chase cards to my annual fee Sapphire Preferred, which then lets me redeem them at 1.25 cents per point for travel bookings through the Chase portal. It's not the highest rate, but it's super convenient. Just pick your flights, hotel or rental car, and you're set. No need to mess around with transferring points to airlines, dealing with wait lists, or hunting for award availability. But if you are up for some digging, the Sapphire Preferred lets you transfer points to partners like United, Hyatt, or Southwest, which would be a game changer. I move all of my points to this card and then transfer them to the best partner based on my travel plans. Last year, I redeemed around 90,000 chase points for a multiple business class flights that would have cost me thousands of dollars. One redemption alone covered my annual fee for at least a couple years. So why did I say this card is hard to justify? Because it's the only one I have with an annual fee where I don't use any of the built in credits or benefits. Well, besides the transferring to a transfer partner benefit, I solely rely on those points redemptions to get my value back from this card. And sometimes that does mean spending hours finding the perfect travel transfer partner deal. And while I do use the card for travel and streaming purchases, it's not enough to offset the $95 annual fee by itself just from the points I earn from spend on this card. This card only really shines when combined with my other Chase cards. It's not a lone wolf. That's why it's the hardest to justify for me every year. But a card that's always worth it for me without using any other credit cards well, that's the Amex Hilton Aspire. Let's talk about why it's such a keeper. The $550 Amex Hilton Aspire is an expensive credit card. Of course, it's issued by Amex, who already tends to squeeze our wallets for cash every year with their expensive status symbol credit cards. But I think the Hilton Aspire is still one of the most valuable hotel cards on the market today. Here's why. Let's start with the Hilton Aspire's annual $200 flight credit. Unlike the Amex Platinum flight credit, there's no need to enroll or choose an airline ahead of time. Sounds convenient, right? But there's a catch. The $200 is split into four $50 credits spread out once a quarter over the year. You could trigger this benefit with any airfare purchase made directly through an airline or the Amex travel portal, and sometimes even baggage fees or seat upgrades work too. If you travel regularly or do a quick Google search on how to best use this credit, you'll have no problem taking advantage of the full $200. Now let's talk about the $400 resort credit. The Aspire card gives you $200 in credit twice a year, that's once every six months, for purchases at Hilton Resorts. It covers everything from room rates to room service, dining and drinks at the hotel bar. Basically anything charged to your room during your stay. Traveling can get expensive, especially at resorts. So it's easy to use up this credit in just one trip. I've personally used it for all kinds of expenses and in an ideal scenario, these two credits alone give you $600 in value, more than covering the annual fee. But it gets even better. With the Aspire, you also get automatic Hilton diamond status, the highest loyalty tier Hilton offers just for holding the card. This means I usually get room upgrades, especially internationally, though it's typically just a bigger room or a slightly better view. One standout experience, however, was at the Hilton Tokyo, where Diamond Status got me access to the executive lounge. The lounge had an amazing view, 
free breakfast, snacks, and drinks. Finally, there's the free night award that comes with the Hilton Aspire card, which you get every year, starting with the year that you open the card. You could use it at almost any Hilton property, from a $1,000 a night Waldorf Astoria in Hawaii, to a $2,000 a night stay at the Waldorf Astoria Maldives. While these are the high-end examples, even a typical $200 to $400 stay at a Hilton makes this benefit a huge win. So when you stack the flight credits, resort credits, diamond status, and the free night award, this card can offer immense value if you're the right fit. You'll need to stay at Hilton's and fly at least a couple times a year to make the most out of this card. But what if you're more of a Marriott person? Well, next up, I'll show you how I justify the $650 fee on the Amex Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant card. I'll be honest, the Marriott Marriott's Brilliant card is like the Hilton Aspire card, but worse. So with all that said, how do I still get positive value from the Marriott's Bonvoy Brilliant card despite its eye-popping $650 annual fee? It's not easy, but let me break it down for you. First off, the card comes with Marriott Platinum status. It's not the highest tier, that would be Titanium and Ambassador status, but it's a solid middle ground. Below Platinum status, you have Gold, Silver, and Basic member status. Platinum is really where you start seeing meaningful benefits though, like 4 p.m. late checkout, free breakfast, lounge access, and even sweet upgrades, none of which are available to gold members and lower. Sure, gold gets you a 2 p.m. checkout, but those extra two hours can really make a difference. I've had this card for a little over a year, and so far, I've only stayed at a Marriott once, at the credit card meetup in New Orleans. Even then, I scored a room upgrade, not a suite, but still an upgrade. I took advantage of the food credits and enjoyed that sweet 4 p.m. late checkout. But the truth is, these perks really shine more when you're traveling internationally, which I haven't done with Marriott yet. As nice as Platinum status is, it's not enough to make up for that hefty annual fee on its own. Now let's talk about the $300 dining credits. Because it's Amex, this credit is split into $25 monthly chunks. Thankfully, it's super easy to use on any purchase worldwide that codes as a restaurant transaction. I've used it everywhere from Macaroni Grill to Chick-fil-A and even on Uber Eats. I eat out at least once a month anyway, so this credit fits seamlessly into my lifestyle. That's $300 of value right there, plus maybe $50 for the Platinum Status perks, which still leaves us around $300 short of breaking even on the annual fee. But here's where the real value kicks in, the annual free night award. This can be used at any Marriott property worth up to 85,000 points per night. That might not cover every hotel in their portfolio, but it still includes high-end options like St. Regis and Ritz-Carlton properties that could easily go for over $1,000 a night. While those, again, are extreme cases, even a $400 per night hotel gives you solid value. My anniversary date was at the beginning of September of 2024, so I haven't received my first free night certificate yet. Hopefully it'll come in the next few weeks or so. But when I do receive it, I'll be aiming for those luxurious properties first, then probably settling for something more practical. Luckily, I also snagged a hefty sign-up bonus of 170,000 Marriott points, which covered my first year value easily. But there's one more benefit that really drew me to this card. 25 elite qualifying nights towards status. This is the highest bonus you could get from any Marriott card without even setting foot in a hotel. And it puts you a third of the way towards titanium status, which requires 75 nights in a year. And speaking of elite status, that brings me to the next annual fee card in my portfolio. This is the $125 Amex Marriott business card. I keep the Marriott business card for three main reasons, ranked from least to most impactful. First, just for holding this card, you get a 7% discount on eligible bookings through Marriott.com. It's not as generous as corporate rates or some other special discounts, but hey, every little bit helps. And you don't even have to pay with this card to get the discount. You just need to be a card holder. So I could use a different card with better rewards for the actual payment. That said, I don't count this perk though towards recouping the annual fee. The second reason, elite status nights. In the Marriott program, you could only receive elite qualifying nights from two cards, one personal and one business. So to maximize this, I pair the Marriott's Brilliant card, which gives me 25 elite nights with this business card that provides me 15 elite nights. 
for a total of 40 nights each year. That means I only need to spend 35 more nights to hit titanium status, or technically just 30 nights since reaching 50 qualifying nights with Marriott earns you a choice of milestone gifts, one being five additional elite nights. You can't stack two personal cards or two business cards to get more nights, which is why this combination is one of the best ways to fast track titanium status with Marriott. And while I intended to go for titanium status in 2024, I've only stayed one night in a Marriott so far, so it's safe to say I'm not hitting that goal anytime this year. Now the most impactful benefit is the annual free night award. Every anniversary, you get a certificate for a Marriott stay worth up to 35,000 points. I use mine at the Westin in New Orleans during the credit card meetup. At the time, the room was going for $250 to $300 a night, easily covering my annual fee. Even though I didn't prioritize reaching titanium status this year, I'm planning to go for it soon. And when I do, both this card and the Marriott Brilliant will be even more valuable for fast tracking higher status. We've covered a lot so far, but we still have two more cards to go. Let's start with the one that just got a major revamp. Here is the now $325 annual fee Amex Gold card. No, I'm not thrilled about yet another Another fee increase, classic Amex move, right? But I've got a plan to still get solid value from it. First up, the $120 Uber credit. These are super easy to use. If I'm traveling that month, I'll use it for Uber rides, which is probably the best way to maximize this benefit. But if I'm not on the go, I just order food through Uber Eats, either delivery or pickup. It's a simple hassle-free benefit that I actually enjoy using. Then there's the $120 dining credit, which isn't as straightforward, but still useful. I usually use it for Grubhub orders or at the Cheesecake Factory each month. Now let's talk about the two new credits on the gold card. First, the $84 annual Dunkin' Donuts credit, broken down into $7 each month. So far, I've just been reloading a Dunkin' gift card on the app. I'm not a huge donut person and I actually prefer Krispy Kreme, but hey, free donuts are always a win, right? I don't drink coffee either, so I'm not sure what else I'll use it on. Maybe I'll be adventurous with some of their snack options, but for now, I'm just shoplifting. But for now, I'm just stockpiling gift card credits. The second new perk is a $100 Resi credit split into two $50 increments every year. You just need to dine at a Resi restaurant to trigger it. This is great for city dwellers, but it's a bit trickier if you're not near a major metro area. Interestingly, I've already managed to trigger about $44 of this credit from non-Resi restaurants, which might be a glitch since this feature just rolled out. If Amex keeps it broken, like how it is right now, it's a win for us gold card holders because we could use this credit at some non-resi restaurants and that's great. But even if they do fix this, I'll have no trouble using the full $100 each year on date nights or special dinners at resi restaurants even just grabbing drinks counts. With the $120 Uber, $120 dining, and $100 resi credits, I'm already covering my annual fee and then some. And that's not even considering the Dunkin' credits or the points I rack up using the gold card for dining throughout the year. Next, I wanna talk about my favorite card in my wallet, not for everyday spending, but for the awesome credits and benefits it brings. I know this might be a controversial take, but I love my Amex Platinum card, even if it is often called a coupon book. Honestly, I find it easier to use than the Amex Gold. Probably because the Platinum's credits are mostly yearly or semi-annual, so there's less to keep track of each month. Now here's where I squeeze over $1,000 worth of value out of this $695 annual fee card. First, there's the $200 annual hotel credit for bookings at hotel collection and fine hotels and resorts properties through the Amex travel portal. I used to use this credit at the Hilton Hawaiian Village in Honolulu, combining it with my $200 resort credit from the Hilton Aspire card for a free weekend staycation because it got two nights at that place. But since Amex removed that property and several others in Honolulu from the Amex hotel portfolio, I had to find new options. In 2024, I use it at the stunning Fasano Punta de Este in Uruguay. I even recorded my entire stay there, which along with other behind the scenes videos will be available to my YouTube members down below. Sure, these hotels are pricier through the Amex portal, but booking just one night at a fine hotels and resorts property gives you perks like late checkout, room upgrades, early check-in, a $100 property credit, and daily breakfast for two. It's especially useful in places like Las Vegas, where there are tons of options. You can actually get positive value 
value on a single night stay. Next is the $240 entertainment credit broken down into $20 monthly increments. I use it for my Hulu and Disney Plus subscriptions, which renew automatically every month so I don't have to think about using it. I wish Amex would include more popular services like Netflix, Spotify, or YouTube Premium, but again, that would be too easy for us to use and I'm sure Amex won't make as much money. Then there's the Walmart Plus credit, which I haven't found much use for beyond the occasional free shipping. Nothing to really rave about, but the $200 Uber credit, that's a no brainer for me. I use it for Uber rides or Uber eats, just like how I do with the gold card. So it's easy value. The $200 annual flight credit is a bit more restrictive since you have to choose an airline at the start of the year. I pick United and have no problem using the full amount, usually on baggage fees or seat upgrades. The $100 Saks credit can be tricky if you don't have a physical Saks Fifth Avenue nearby, but I'm lucky enough to live near one in Los Angeles. So I pop over to Beverly Hills where I totally don't belong and usually pick up some cologne. Speaking of which, here's a peek at my collection. I'm not a hardcore collector, but I do like to smell good every once in a while. Shout out to Max, AKA Ninja, who is a prominent member in the credit card community who also is really into cologne. So that $100 Saks credit gets put to good use every year. And then there's the clear credit, which I probably wouldn't pay for if it wasn't included. It's not something that is valuable every time I use it, but when I do use it, sometimes it saves me a lot of time. I'm grateful Amex covers it. Of course, one of the biggest perks of the Platinum Card is access to the Centurion lounges. When they aren't packed and when I don't have to wait for an hour to get in, sure, they're great to have. Adding up the Uber, flights, hotel, sacks, and entertainment credits alone, I get around $940 in value. But it's those fine hotels and resorts benefits that really push me over the $1,000 mark every year. It's not for everyone, but if you love travel perks, the Platinum Card can definitely be worth it. Whether it's maximizing credits, enjoying elite hotel perks, or just finding ways to get more value than you pay in fees, each of these cards has a unique place in my wallet. Remember, what works for me might not work for everyone, so always choose the cards that best fit your lifestyle and spending habits. If you wanna support the channel, please take a look at the affiliate links down below in the description box, or before you go, make sure to watch this next video that YouTube thinks you'll love. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Shoots.